fine. Praise God. God bless you and your family. Uh, we pray for you often and as well as others on here. And um, we thank God for what you're doing. Stand firm in the word of God, Jeep, okay? Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Dustina. Hey, Dustina, God bless you and your family. This is our gardener, ladies and gentlemen. She's got some recipes on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, she can turn anything into a good meal. Hi, Dustina. Good morning, Pastor. Praise God. Good morning, God bless church. you. God bless, God bless you. you. All right. And and greetings to you and your children, to Nick, Destiny, and Nathan, and God bless all of you. Praise God. Thank and, you. God uh, bless you. We might ask Nathan to close us out today in prayer. We're going to ask uh, Ryan Trogler to open us up in prayer. But Nick, uh, 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 Nathan, we haven't forgotten you. We have not forgotten you, okay? All right. So praise God. We'll talk with you all in a moment. Praise God. God Thank you. Christy Carpenter and all of our friends up in Idaho. Praise God up in Idaho. God bless you, Christy, and your family. Come on and say hello to us if you can, Christy. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good morning. Praise the Lord. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. God bless you. And um, give our love to Aaron and all the family, okay? I sure will. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. We'll talk with you soon. By the way, if any of you would like to activate your webcam, and we'd like to see you, um, and um, you, you can activate your webcam. Praise God. Um, like to see who's on with us, and uh, praise God. We just we just bless you. We just bless you. It's all right if your hair is in rollers. It's all right. Nobody's going to freak. Amen. Praise God. Nobody's going to talk about you. We don't talk about one another here at the online church. Bless God. Megan, Megan in California. Hey, Megan. Come on and say hello to us, Megan. Good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, church. Praise Lord. God. God bless you, Megan. Megan, we got a lot of people on. Hey, everybody, Megan is from California, and uh, we've been praying for the end of the forest fires up there. Megan standing in the gap for a lot of people in, in, western, in the western part of the country. We love Megan and thank God for her and her family. So, Megan, we'll be talking with you uh, later on, okay? Okay. I love all you guys, too. Praise God. Praise God. We ask you all to stay on after the message because after the message, we want to get into some real uh, laying hands on and prayer and, and, and getting people healed. The Holy Ghost wants to heal people and uh, cast out unclean spirits. I mean, we will take your prayer request after the message. And we want to encourage you, don't be afraid to ask your prayer request. Uh, if it's too personal, then uh, get into touch with me on a one-on-one, -on -one, either by my telephone or email or text message, and we'll minister one-on-one. -on -one. But praise God, but uh, if you have a, a prayer request at the end of the service, please bring this forward, and we will pray. We're family. We're developing as a, an online church family. We love one another, and we're learning how to stand in the gap with, with, for one another. Okay, we're getting ready for our message today. It's entitled Spiritual Warfare, Part 2. I want to encourage you to go back uh, to Part 1 last week. You can get that on my YouTube channel or email me, and I'll send that to you. Look at, uh, we're doing a whole series. We're going to spend several weeks in spiritual warfare because God has identified some things in in your life, your life, and my life, and, and, and lives of people, and God wants people to be set free, and God is going to do it through this ministry. He's going to set a lot of people free. He's going to teach you how to get your family free, how to stay free, and uh, you just uh, stick with this and learn these principles that we're teaching. Study the Word of God. Today, today's message is going to teach 
a whole lot of people how to get free, praise God, and, and what your options are. And so we're going to ask our friend from up in Pennsylvania, Ryan Trogler, our friend, uh, uh, he's up around Route 100 in Pennsylvania. Hey, Ryan, come on and say hello to us, and then lead us in prayer, please. Uh, good morning, Pastor Carter again, and good morning to the church. Good morning. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day today. Uh, we're, we want you to bless Pastor Carter and the, the word, and the word that you're about to ready to re give to him, so we can so the church can receive it. We just want to thank you for this online church and the glory that you have given all of us and, and the Holy Spirit. And we just want to say we thank you, and we love you, and we praise you through Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. amen amen thank you ryan thank you ryan praise god we thank you ryan and we we give god the glory the honor and praise um thank god thank god so glad to have my niece wayne it on with us today and praise god and if you want to unlock your video camera your webcam cam, and come on we'd like to see you too praise god well let's look at the the scripture we're going to be reading today from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, and 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1, uh, 3 to 5. Let's look at, in, in reverse order, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and uh, we're going to look at verses 3 to 5. This is what the Word of God says, ladies and gentlemen. For though we walk in the, in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. The, this scripture, I want, I want you to read it over and over again in your own time. Pray over it. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation on this scripture. This is your key to success, ladies and gentlemen. Every one of us has to fight spiritual warfare. Every one of us is dealing with demonic powers, forces that are sent by Satan, assigned to us to destroy us, to destroy our household, to destroy our children, to destroy our spouses, to destroy the church. Satan hates us. He hates the church. He hates you. And he would do all he can to try to take you down and pull you away from God. This scripture is so important, ladies and gentlemen, for you to stay above board and to stay in victory. And so I want you to uh, even memorize this scripture. Memorize this scripture. Teach it to your children. We're going to look more at this scripture a little later on. Now we want to go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And when we combine uh, 2 Corinthians 3 uh, uh, verses, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 to 5 with Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, you've got enough equipment, ladies and gentlemen, to blow the devil out of the water. You can get your husband delivered. You can get your children delivered. And if you're not acting right, you can practice self-deliverance and get yourself delivered. Okay, so finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, 
wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The scripture says, praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Ladies and gentlemen, these two scriptures are enough to get you delivered, get your household free. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what problem is coming against you, no matter what issue you're facing, no matter what sickness has attacked your body, no matter what challenges you're dealing with, or your husband, or your wife, or your children, or the church, even the government, ladies and gentlemen, we, if the church would just apply these scriptures, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, and 2 Corinthians uh, 10, three to five, if the church would come in agreement and apply these scriptures, we could get the government delivered. We could get rid of corruption in the government. We can get a nation that's full of righteousness and holiness. You know, if the church would just agree, ladies and gentlemen, and if any two of us agree as touching upon anything uh, uh, that we believe God to do, he's going to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, this power that God is giving us through this word, uh, how to fight spiritual warfare, can get people delivered. Years ago, there was a lady in New York. She uh, got up out on the uh, balcony of a high-rise building, ladies and gentlemen, and she climbed over the railing, and she was about to jump. Now, ladies and gentlemen, t to tell you how crazy this world is, the people down on the ground looked up, and they were saying, jump. Jump, 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 jump. Come on, let go. Fly, jump. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a crazy world. Satan wants to take people out. He will use people around you to try to destroy you. And, and ladies and gentlemen, the church knows, should know what to do. There was a woman on the ground, and she looked up and saw this lady about to jump to commit suicide, and she got on her cell phone. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the power of agreement. The Bible tells us that if any two of us agree as touching upon anything we ask God in the name of Jesus, believing that he will do anything, no matter what the situation, ladies and gentlemen, if any two of us would just agree, can you imagine what this nation would be like, what this world would be like if the church would just agree on one thing, if we stop our jealousy and our envy and our bickerings and our bitterness mm. and just agree on the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, this lady called her girlfriend on the phone and said, girl, there's a woman up on this high rise. She's about to jump off. She's way up there, about 30 floors. She's going to jump off. She wants to commit suicide. She said, now the word of God says that if any two of us agree as touching upon anything we ask God in the name of Jesus, believing that God will do. Ladies and gentlemen, the girlfriend said, I agree. Let's pray for her. And they began praying in tongues, ladies and gentlemen. There's power in praying in tongues. You may not pray in tongues yet. You may not even believe in it, but believe the scripture. Read 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14. Read the word of God. Read Ephesians 5, 18. And be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. There's power in tongues. And ladies and gentlemen, even if you pray in the natural, in English, and two of you agree as touching upon what you're asking God, believing God will do it. God is not a respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of languages, but he will honor the Holy Ghost because when you pray in tongues, the scripture says in Romans 8, 26 to 28, therefore the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit uh, uh, makes groans and utterances which cannot be articulated, and he who searches the hearts knoweth the mind of the Spirit, for the Spirit prays in the perfect will of God. So if you are a tongue talker, pray in tongues. The Holy Ghost is praying directly to God, and God understands the Holy Ghost's language. Language, and there's no blockage. Nothing can block your 
your prayers when you're praying in tongues. Believe this, church. Don't listen to what Pastor so and so is saying, what Prophet so and so is saying, what what the that denomination is saying. Ladies and gentlemen, many people in the church are perishing because they got their own take on what the scriptures mean. Ladies and gentlemen, the scriptures tell us, Peter says, there is but one interpretation of the scripture. Not Reverend so and so, not sister so and so, not mom, not grandma. Their interpretation don't mean diddly squat, ladies and gentlemen. It is the interpretation of the Holy Spirit. So when you pray in tongues, you're praying directly to God. Satan can't block your prayers. He can't hinder. He doesn't understand what you're saying. He hates it. He, you shut him down. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're praying in your natural, in English, or Swahili, or Spanish, or German, or Polyvoo Francais, whatever language you're using, pray in your natural language. God hears you, and, and he searches the heart. He knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. The Spirit helps you in your infirmity. Ladies and gentlemen, when these two ladies started praying, ladies and gentlemen, glory to God, glory to God, something happened. And so I'm fired up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm fired up. God, the anointing is upon this ministry. Amen. Upon this message. God wants to set some people free. He wants to let you know what you and he can do. When you partner with the Holy Ghost, the devil can't stop it. He can't stop it. This lady, ladies and gentlemen, who had climbed out on the balcony, she wanted to jump off, even though the crowd was saying, jump, 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 jump. Ladies and gentlemen, God had a policeman. God sent a policeman right there, and the policeman climbed out on the ledge with her and quietly and calmly talked her, talked her into walking to him and taking his hand. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, that's how God moves. God is so gentle. He's so loving. He's so kind. Mm -hmm. he, he loves every one of us. He doesn't want you taking your life. He doesn't want you blowing your brains out. He doesn't want you taking poison. He doesn't want you ODing on opioids. He doesn't want you smoking crack. He doesn't want you smoking reefer. He doesn't want you committing suicide. He doesn't want you committing adultery. God's got a plan for your life. The scripture says in Psalms 139, 14, I love this, I love this. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by God so that you might praise him. Satan is the one, ladies and gentlemen. He tries to make you think you're a nobody. You're nothing. You can't do this. You're not going to be successful. Satan wants to think, wants you to think everybody's deserted you. They have abandoned you. You're, you're left out of God's plan. But the devil is a liar. The scripture says we cast down all vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Satan's uh, accusations exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. That is why when Jesus fought the devil in the wilderness, when the devil said, if you are the son of God, he said, if, and every time somebody says to us, if, they try to touch that spirit of pride. If you are the son of God, then turn this, these rocks into bread. Jesus said to him, Satan, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil said he wouldn't give up. He said, if you're the son of God, jump off this high mountain and, and cut because it is written. The angels will, 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 will hold you up. See, the devil knows some scriptures. He knows some scriptures. And he will try to make you think he knows more than God. But the devil is a liar. You need to study your scripture. And you can blow the devil out of the water like Jesus did. Jesus said, it is written, devil. It is written. It is written, uh, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when Jesus finished hitting the devil with the word of God, the scripture said, and the devil had to leave him. And no matter what you're going through, that some of you may have sickness in your body. The doctor may have given you a bad report. Some of you may have lost your job. Some of you may be threatened, threatened with foreclosure on your property. Some of you may, may not have $2 to rub together. Some of you are going through. Some of you lost your friends. Your family's acting crazy. Your husband acting goofy. Your wife's acting simple. Ladies and gentlemen, your children are acting crazy. They're doing back over flips when they all be walking straight. Ladies and gentlemen, you can shut this activity down. 
There are some of you who can't sleep at night. You're having uh, 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 panic attacks. You're waking up in a cold sweat. You're waking up doing the James Brown in a cold sweat. Ladies and gentlemen, you can, you can close those cold sweats down. You can close those panic attacks down. Ladies and gentlemen, you can sleep at night. You can sleep peacefully at night. If your children are waking up screaming at night, ladies and gentlemen, you can shut that down by the word of God. We're talking about spiritual warfare, ladies and gentlemen. Spiritual warfare. If two people can shut down a suicidal demon and have that woman come back off that balcony into safety. What do you think three or four or five of us in agreement can do? Ladies and gentlemen, if we agree, even on this online church, this, this segment of the body of Christ, if we agree on anything, if we're going to pray for Ryan, or if we're going to pray, pray for Christy, or if we're going to pray for Nathan, or if we're going to pray for Susie, or if we're going to pray for John, then as we come into agreement, as we enter into their situation, as we empathize with them as we show them love and pray and trust God it is no secret what God can do what he's done for others he'll do for you God is no respecter of persons ladies and gentlemen I pray for the day when the members of the body of Christ will stop thinking about themselves and yeah. think about others and care for others and show love of Christ towards others. The scripture says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Christ had a mind for all people, ladies and gentlemen, not just a, a favorite few. When we begin to look outside of ourselves and look at all the billions of people in this world, and all the differences in people, if we begin to look beyond our own skin color and start loving people whose skin is of a different pigment, ladies and gentlemen, if we look beyond our own language and start loving people who speak a different language, if we look beyond our own culture and love people of different cultures, when we open our hearts like Jesus and, 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 and love the whole world, ladies and gentlemen, there is no no uh, limitation to what God can do through us and in the lives of people. Ladies and gentlemen, if we uh, just come together in agreement that we want good, honest, righteous government in this nation, we can have it. If you come, uh, two of you agree in your own nation, whether it's Kenya or Nigeria, whether it's Bolivia, whether it's Colombia, whether it's Mexico, whether it's Canada, when you come together in prayer, believing God, ladies and gentlemen, and praying, it is not, there is no secret to what God can do. Nothing is impossible with God. Ladies and gentlemen, we walk by faith and not by sight. The scripture yeah. says, it, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So walk yeah. by faith, ladies and gentlemen, and not yeah. by sight. We're in a battle in this world. We may not see it. We, not, we might forget it's there. But the enemy would love nothing more than to fill our minds with discouragement and defeat. Satan wants to shut you down. He doesn't want you to win. He's going to do everything he can to try to discourage you, to try to uh, bring divisions. He tries to destroy marriages. Some of your marriages are, are, are not where they ought to be. Satan, it's the devil. It's not your wife. It's not your husband. Stop fighting your wife. Stop fighting your husband. Learn how to fight that devil. Drive him out. Cast him out. Your children are acting crazy. Your, 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 your son's running around uh, uh, with homosexuals, and, and, and uh, your daughter's running around with lesbians. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, don't blink your eye at it. Attack it. Attack it, ladies and gentlemen. There are things you can do. Your son does not have to grow up to be gay. Your daughter does not have to grow up to be a lesbian. You have the power, ladies and gentlemen. You have the power. And there are so many people waiting on God to do something. Ladies and gentlemen, there are things you have to do. The scripture says train up a child in the way in which he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you allow your children, your little boys to play with dolls when they're infants, you let them to, uh, 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 they go to sleep with a doll baby, a little boy going to sleep with a doll baby. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a sign that something's not right. Ladies and gentlemen, your baby's crying. Your child is crying. He's three years old. I want my doll. I want my Barbie doll. I want my Susie Q. Ladies and gentlemen, that's when you ought to stop. And, 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 and look at this situation. You've got to take authority. You've mm-hmm. got to let that child know that God made mankind male and female, made he them. He did not make any with both. He did not make any with just the opposite. He made male and female. And you've got to teach your child you are born a male. See that little ding-a-ling? You were made a, a male. I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I know that might be funny, but you've got to point that out to him. And you've got to point that out to that little girl. She doesn't have one. And, 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 and well, well, why don't I have what a little Johnny has? Because God made you different. And you've got to start from day one, ladies and gentlemen, teaching them who they are in Christ. Teach them who they are. Don't wait till they get to kindergarten. Don't wait till they get to school. Ladies and gentlemen, some of these teachers are corrupt. You've got you've got gays teaching your children. You've got lesbians teaching your children. You've got transsexuals teaching your children. I know here in Georgia they allow they allow, ladies and gentlemen, they allow gays, they allow uh, men to dress up like women and come into the schools and read stories to the children. They don't allow Christians to go into the schools and read the Bible to the children, but they allow a, a lesbian, uh, a, a woman dressed up like a man, to come and read stories to the children, and they can go through gyrations and all kinds of craziness, and it's allowed, ladies and gentlemen, but you've got to take the authority, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to get into Second Corinthians 10, Three to five. You have got to get into Ephesians 10, uh, six, uh, ten to eighteen, and you've got to you've got to do more than just watching the soap operas. You've got to do more than watching the sitcoms. You've got to do more than just watching Ellen DeGeneres. You've got to do more than watching Steve Harvey. You've got to do more than watching the sports. You've got to do more than watching the football games. You've got to take your children and have a family altar with them once a week, having a family altar. Every family altar, get with their children once a week for at least a half hour and read the Bible to them. Pray for them. Husband, you need to lay hands on your wife. Learn how to cast out demonic spirits out of her. Ladies and gentlemen, the divorce rate in this this nation is so atrocious, so high, it ought not to be. Ladies and gentlemen, when two people stand before an altar, before God Almighty, and say, I promise, I will. You're making holy vows unto God. Ladies and gentlemen, I once married a man and a woman, and, 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 and they went on a honeymoon that day, and, and the next week I saw him dejected, busted, broke, and disgusted. I said, what happened, man? He said, man, she left me the, on the night of our wedding. Ladies and gentlemen, this should not be. When you take a vow, you're vowing to love that person till death do you part. Ladies and gentlemen, divorce is so easy. So many people are offended. Their feelings are, well, he hurt my feelings. Or we have irreconcilable differences. In other words, she's got a control spirit, and she wants to control the situation. And he's got a control spirit, and he wants to control the situation the situation, and they both have demons in them, proud spirits, and ladies and gentlemen, neither one is willing to look in the mirror of the word of God and say, it's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So what they do, they fight each other. He becomes her enemy, and she becomes his enemy, and they fight one another, and Satan is just laughing at it. He's mm-hmm. laughing at it because, because he knows if he disrupts this marriage, he's going to disrupt children. He's going to disrupt future generations. He's going to have people not wanting to marry. That's why you got so many people shacking up, ladies and gentlemen, living together. And we've got many people in the church. Yes, I might even be talking about you. We've got people living in the church, 
and they know they're not married. That man knows he's not married to that woman he's sleeping with. She knows she's not married to that man he's sleeping with. But I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I'm feeling. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, you might be born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, but you're, if you're living with a woman and you're not married to her, you're having sex with her, you're going to bust hell wide open. I don't care if you do get offended with me. I just don't care, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody needs to offend you. Somebody needs to wake you up from your sleep. Somebody needs to wake you up from S-I-M-P-L-E, simple, 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 simple Simon. He met a pieman on the way to the fair. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to wake up. I know pastors, ladies and gentlemen, who are living with women and that woman, a woman and that woman's not his wife. Yet the congregation just glosses over it. They let him continue to be a pastor. Ladies and gentlemen, if a pastor is shacking up with another woman, he ought to step down and get delivered. I know women pastors, ladies and gentlemen, and the and the and the, and the, and, the, and the husband is the first lady. The woman, she's a lesbian, and the husband is the first lady. And it's two women living together, and they're pastoring churches. And ladies and gentlemen, the thing that sickens me is people go to these churches. These demonic spirits flock to these churches, certain areas, certain areas where Satan has assigned lesbian spirits, they have lesbian churches, and lesbians are, uh, are attracted to those churches. In certain areas, you have gay churches where, where gays come. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll never forget the time I went to a church in Chicago. It blew my mind, ladies and gentlemen. It blew my mind. The number of gays in that church, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to be gay. You don't have to live to be gay. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be delivered if you want to be delivered. If you want, well, you say, well, Pastor Carter, you know, the law says we can marry whoever we want. You know, the church is passe. The church is old. The church is archaic. And the Bible, the Bible is no longer uh, up to date. And well, well, if that's what you think, you keep on thinking that way. But the day is coming, ladies and gentlemen. The day is coming, ladies and gentlemen, when God's going to send judgment. God's going to hold us all accountable. And, and there will be gay saying, but Lord, Lord, didn't I preach your word? Didn't I? Uh, lay hands on the sick, did not visit the poor, did not build houses, did not build churches in your name. And Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. He's going to say that to, to, to lesbians. Depart from me. I never knew you. You had a chance to get delivered. You rejected my word. You turned your back on me. You believed the world. You believed the law. You got under the bondage of the law. And because the law permitted it in North Carolina or Pennsylvania or Georgia or wherever you were living, you just went on and did what you wanted to do. And you, you rejected preachers. You, you, didn't, you stomped out those who wanted to give you the word. And, 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 and no, depart from me. The scripture says God is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. The Bible says there will be weeping and wailing, pulling of teeth, pulling of hair, as people will scream as they're led to the lake of fire. They will scream, ladies and gentlemen. And Lord, uh, Lord knows there are people in hell right now, right now, right now. Many of them we know. We know a lot of people are in hell. All these people we have funeralized did not go to heaven. A lot of people we feel preachers ought to stop lying at these funerals. Stop lying. If, 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 if Uncle Joe lived like hell, how can you put him in heaven? Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. People are in hell right now, right now, wishing they were in your body, wishing uh, that they were had another chance on earth. Ladies and gentlemen, once you die, it is over. It's a point that wants to die, but after death comes the judgment. And when you stand before God, and you can plead, and you can cop a plea, and, 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 and you can a plea bargain, and you can do like they're doing in Washington, D.C., you can be in denial, you can point the finger at someone else. But ladies and gentlemen, the truth will come to life. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. it's what you do for Christ that's going to last. Mm. Did you mm. obey Jesus Christ? Did you receive him as your Savior? Did you, did you get delivered? Did you deny yourself? Did you, did you walk in righteousness? Did you walk by faith? Did you shut down uh, uh, that, that, those temptations? Did you resist the temptations? The Bible teaches us resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Yes, 
he will flee. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you, and I want to say to every one of you, and, and I don't care if you do get angry with me, uh, God didn't call me to be a punk and, 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 and not be afraid. He yeah. said, don't be afraid to preach the word of God. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, stop blinking your eyes at demons. Yeah. Stop blinking your eyes at the demons. If you know that your husband is sleeping with another woman, stop crying all night. Stop sitting up all night wondering what he's doing. You know what he's doing. Stop killing yourself, worrying and crying and, and, and taking pills and, and drinking or smoking a reefer or smoking crack or taking opioids. Opioids cannot deliver, uh, uh, deliver you when your husband's out there running with another woman. Yeah. You can take all the opioids in the world, and the result will be you'll cut your own life short. Yeah. And he'll keep on running, he'll keep on running, he'll keep on running, he'll keep on running. But ladies and gentlemen, you can shut that adultery down. Same thing with a husband. If you know your wife's not acting right, and, and, and you don't need a rocket scientist to come yeah. and tell you your wife is not acting right. You look her in her eyeballs. If she can't look into your eyes without blinking or turning her eyes or rolling her eyes. I, I, I remember I encountered a lying spirit in a woman one, one time, and she couldn't even look me in the eye. Her eyes would roll, and I knew that was demonic, demonic activity. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, some, some, some pe before your children get married, you make sure they have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, so many people are being blown away because it feels good, or she looks good, or she got long hair. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, 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 be careful all this long hair because a lot of this long hair came straight from Korea, it came straight from the horse's back. Ladies and gentlemen, all this long hair you're seeing, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of it ain't real. Ladies and gentlemen, when I grew up, I, I was surrounded by nappy-headed girls, nappy-headed girls. Uh, mama, my mama had to use a straightening comb to bust them naps. And 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 uh, and, and and now all of a sudden everybody got straight hair and it's all different colors and praise God, all different shapes and all different fashions, ladies and gentlemen. And that's turning on a lot of guys and then all the makeup, ladies and gentlemen. I'll give me a woman who's plain, ladies. I want to see what she look like without the makeup, ladies and gentlemen. I, I know a whole lot of guys are freaked out when they wake up and see what the real deal is. <laughs> My least Wayne that's cracking up. He's cracking up. Uh, some of these guys, I mean, wake up and see, oh, is this what I married? Yeah, when you take all that makeup off, ladies, don't, look, teach your young sons. Teach your daughters. Don't be deceived. Uh, uh, don't be deceived because the guy got a car. Ladies and gentlemen, he might have stole that car. Ladies and gentlemen, he might not even have a driver's license. He might not even have insurance. And you're going out with him because he got a car. He might have borrowed that car. Ladies and gentlemen, that suit he has on might not be his. Those shoes might not be his. Ladies and gentlemen, don't get carried away with clothing, with material goods, with that bankroll. Ladies and gentlemen, he got a, oh, mama, he got a bankroll. He got a roll of money. He got a wad of money in his pocket. Ladies and gentlemen, you can buy a wad of money on Amazon.com. You can send Amazon.com $26, and you can get tens of thousands of, bank of dollars, and they look like the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. They look... Check out Amazon if you don't believe me. They look out the real deal. But so many people are caught up in worldliness and possessions and stuff. And, and, and you know, when, when I'm counseling men and women about marriage, one of the first thing I ask a man or the first thing I ask a woman, I ask a man, did your daddy say don't marry that woman? And nine times out of ten, his daddy said, son, I wouldn't marry her if I were you. But, you know, we're hard-headed. We know more than our pops. We know more than our grandfathers. We know more than our parents. Or, uh, and this, did your mother say to you, darling, don't ma marry that man. I see something in him. And nine times out of ten, your mama saw something that you could not see because love blinds. Love blinds. And then love when, it's, when sex is added and, 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 and money is added. 
and 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 your friends and, and your what your girlfriends think and what your buddies think. When you add that into the scenario, a lot of people are being blindsided by the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, stop blinking your eyes at demons. Stop pretending that they don't exist. Stop drinking. Stop taking opioids. Drinking cannot drinking will do nothing to chase the demons away. Drinking just brings more demons on the scene. Taking opioids will not chase the demons away. Taking opioids will just bring more demons on the scene to oppress you and harass you. Stop smoking reefer. Stop taking meth. The demons are not going to go away. They love living inside of you. The demons love living inside of you. Ladies and gentlemen, demons have to have a body to live in. And mm. demons are very shrewd. They're highly intellectual. They know what bell to ring, what rope to pull. They know how to get inside of you. And you've got to learn how to keep them out. And then mm. you've got to learn that if you have a demon in you, you've got to learn how to cast them out. Oh, Pastor Card, you've gone off the deep end now. Christians don't have demons. We have the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's not the truth. Even though you might be spirit-filled, you might be a Holy Ghost tongue talker, you might lay hands on the sick. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the many pastors who have fallen. Pornography has brought a lot of pastors down. Mm. These are tongue-talking, Holy Ghost-filled, laying hands on the sick, casting out demons, pastors, but they went down because pornography. The devil found out they like watching naked women, and some of these men like watching naked men, ladies and gentlemen, and that brought them down. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil knows what bell to ring to get to you. That is why you've got to put on the full armor of God every day. Every day you get up, put on the full armor of God. Gird your loins with truth. Put on the belt of truth. Well, what is the truth? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Buckle up truth. In other words, get that word of God in you and determine you're going to walk. You're going to walk in the spirit. Put on the helmet of salvation. Real life. Protect your head. Protect your brain. And don't be giving anybody a piece of your mind. I hate it when I hear somebody say, oh, girl, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. You better hold on to that little piece you still got left. Come on, somebody. Uh, and, 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 and protect your mind. Put on the helmet of salvation. Amen. Uh, it's not what your mind is all about. Put the mind of Christ on. The scripture says, and let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Think his thoughts. That's how Jesus defeated the devil. With his own, his, the word of God. The, Jesus did not defeat the devil uh, with a, an Uzi or you can't shoot the devil. You can't shoot demons. Uh, you, you, you'll blast, blast somebody in your household. You'll, you'll shoot yourself. You can't get your gun out, get your assault weapon to start <laughs> blasting in your household because you saw a demon. Demons are spiritual beings, ladies and gentlemen. You can't fight them with carnal weapons. We learn this from the scripture. But the scripture says, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. You can shut down demonic activity by using the weapons of God. And we're going to go to that in a few moments and let you know what those weapons are. And then uh, we'll take this up next week and show you even more how to cast out these spirits, how to shut them down, and how to get free. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and in order to do this, you've got to be honest with yourself. If you know you've got demonic activity in you, for example, well, how do I know? How do you know? You know by the personalities. You know by your schizophrenic self. You know by, by what uh, personality is manifesting itself in you. If you're angry and grumbling all the time, you've got a demon. You've got a mm -hmm. spirit of grumbling. You don't need a rocket scientist to tell you you've got a demon. If nothing pleases you, you're always angry, you're bitter at everybody, you've got a bitter spirit. You've got a demon of anger. If you're jealous of somebody, you, I don't like her because she thinks she's cute. That's a jealous spirit, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. That's a spirit of envy. You don't need a rocket scientist. Uh, you don't need somebody to come and lay hands on you to get rid of that. You can get rid of that yourself. You can deliver yourself. You can confess that to God. Ladies and gentlemen, look in the mirror. The scripture says we look in the mirror 
and we see what's there, and a lot of times we just leave without even remembering what we saw. We go about doing our same old, same old, smoking reefer, uh, uh, taking opioids, running with somebody else's wife, drinking liquor, going to the club, going to the casino. Now you know you see that person in the mirror, that person ain't looking good. That person looking back at you in the mirror ain't looking good. And you know everything's not right. But in the church, well, we, as long as I get to church on Sunday, hear my pastor pray, hear the, the choir sing, and, and man, if that male chorus is singing, if Brother John sing that song, I know I'll be all right. All right, if Brother John sing that song, ladies and gentlemen, it takes more than that because Brother John's song is not going to deliver you from hell. Hmm. Brother John's song is not going to get you saved or healed. You hmm. need to be born again by the Spirit of God, and then you need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't believe in that Holy Ghost mess, and that's why you're in the mess you're in. Because you don't believe in that Holy Ghost mess. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said to the disciples, Tarry ye in Jerusalem. Wait for the promise. He said that. Well, Pastor Carter, he just said that to his disciples. That was first century. Ladies and gentlemen, stop arguing. Stop trying to put up a defense and listen and learn and let ask God to give you a teachable spirit. A lot of people are being messed up, being destroyed because they're so contentious. They know more than God. They know more than what's in these 66 books. Ladies and gentlemen, stop arguing. Stop debating and humble yourself. Ask God, God created me a clean heart. Renew yeah. a right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. Teach me. Help me to be teachable. You can be 85 years old. And you can be, could, could have been sassy all your life, argumentative all your life, but you can still be born again. Well, I'm going to, I've been going to church. I'm 85. I've been going to church since I was three. I know I'm going to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a sad day when you stand before Jesus. And the Lord asks you, why did you continue uh, cussing people out? Hmm. Every time you'll see somebody, you cuss at them. Or every time you see somebody, you have something mean and nasty to say. Well, I, I went to church, God, all my life. Ladies and gentlemen, going to church is not going to get you into heaven. Hmm. You, you need to listen to this word and you need to get delivered. If you know that you have sin in you, if you know that you've got a demon in you, if you know you've got lust in you, you can't keep your eyes off other men's wives or you're a peeping calm. Ladies and gentlemen, it, that is not social uh, uh, misbehavior. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not a social disorder. It's a demon if you're peeping in other people's windows. Ladies and gentlemen, keep on peeping. The day is going to come, somebody, somebody's going to blow your eyes out. You're peeping in their window, ladies and gentlemen. Or you like to rob banks. You like to rob stores. You like to attack women uh, coming out of the mall. You like to take their pocketbooks. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to take the wrong pocketbook one of these times. You're yeah. going to rob the wrong gas station. You're going to slide into the wrong car in the gas station, and somebody's going to be waiting for you in the car in the back seat, and they're going to blow your brains out. Ladies and gentlemen, there is justice, and people don't have to die as they're dying today. The prisons don't have to be full of people. So many people think they're smarter than God. Hmm. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got to go back to this word. Stop blinking our eyes at demonic spirits. If you've got a demon, don't blink your eye and say, it'll be all right. I'll take two Advils and go to sleep, and I'll be all right in the morning. Ladies and gentlemen, while you're sleeping, that demon in you is inviting seven more. Come on, hmm. she's open. She's open. She thinks opioids can deliver her. Come on, come on, come on. Here, here's, here's a place you can have a party in this woman. And, and ladies and gentlemen, we've got people, we've got preachers in the pulpit full of demonic spirits. Well, how can they be full of demonic spirits, preacher? Hmm. And God called them to preach because they open themselves to demonic spirits. They blink their eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, these things we're seeing in the church, we're seeing in ourselves, and we've got to take a good look at ourselves. It must start with me. I've got to take a good look at me. The psalmist said, David said, uh, Father God, he said, God, search me and, and try my heart and, and see if there be any wicked way in me and search me and try my thoughts. And, 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 uh, and, and see if there be any wicked way in me, then lead me in the way everlasting. We've got to do like David did. When Nathan came to David and gave him that story about the adulterer, and David said, whoever that man is, he ought to die. 
Nathan said, you're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, David repented. David did not point the finger. He did not say, I ran around with other women because my wife was unfair to me. Or, or uh, a wife can't say, I ran around with other men because my husband did not give me attention. There is no excuse. The book of Romans said, thou art inexcusable, O man. There is no excuse. Pastor I hate this kind of preaching because you pull the covers off me. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Ghost has to pull the covers off me too. God Amen. wants us living in holiness and righteousness. He wants us to obey his word. Ladies and gentlemen, God has prepared a place for us. Amen. Jesus has already prepared a place for us. There's a mansion for us in heaven. It's already waiting. Don't miss your mansion because of stubbornness, rebellion. You know more than God. Mm -hmm. If you're backslidden, you're not in church, you ought to be in church. Stay on this online church Sunday after Sunday until God plants you in a, a brick-and-mortar church or a place where you can fellowship with others. You need to stay where the Word of God is. Where the anointing is, that's where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Stop letting those demons torment you. You can't sleep, so you're taking melatonin. You're doubling up on melatonin. Uh, you're taking a Salmonex. Uh, 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 you're taking something to, to, you're drinking some wine. Uh, uh, and, and a lot of you, I know, a lot of you Christians, you like this. Well, the Bible says a little wine for thy stomach's sake, so I take a little glass before I go to bed. Ladies and gentlemen, don't get caught up with that. Before long, you'll be an alcoholic. You'll be depending on wine. Wine will become your God. Dope will become your God. Sex will become your God. God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. We're talking about spiritual warfare, part two. I didn't get to the part where you can attack the demons. You can attack the demons, ladies and gentlemen. You can put on the full armor of God, and no matter what demon has come against you, and you recognize demons by their personality and by the behavior, either the behavior inside of you or the behavior in someone else. If you notice you're doing some things you're not supposed to be doing, that's a demonic spirit causing you to do that. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to reveal this to you. The Holy Spirit reveals it through the words. If you know that your children are, 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 are your son's coming in smelling like reefer, uh, and you know he's doing, he's doing, he's smoking, he's smoking, smoking dope. It won't be long before he's doing something more. You've got to shut it down. So many, so many parents are afraid of their children. Well, he'll call the police on me. He'll call the ACLU on me. Ladies and gentlemen, my son Wes, he's on right now. Wes can tell you, hey, I told Wes and Lorraine and Stacy a long time ago when they were kids. I said, you can call the cops on me if you want to. I'm going to raise you the way the Bible says. And if you call the cops, and the cops will have to become your mother and father because you're out of here. I will not do anything for you. And ladies and gentlemen, they say that's tough love, that's mean, that's nasty. No, it's not. No, it's not. In the Old Testament days when your children were rebellious, when the children were rebellious, the parents took the children to the city gates and turned those children over to the elders of the community, and the elders commanded that those disobedient, rebellious children be stoned to death. Hmm. But now in, 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 the, in this 21st century, they say, well, that's Old Testament. That was wrong. I'm not going to contend with God. God said, train up your child in the way in which he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. Some of us need to go back to basics. It is not too, long, too late. Your child may be 45 years old and still living in your household. But if your child's doing drugs, beating up on you, and, and ain't doing right, you can shut that child down. And a lady called me about 20 years ago. Her, her son was, she was in her 60s or 70s. He was in his 40s. He was beating her, taking her money, making her cook for him, do his clothes. She was living. He was living with his mom. He didn't have a place of his own, didn't have a job. He was beating on her, spending her paycheck, and she called me for counseling. She said, what should I do? I said, put him out. I said, pack his clothes up, put him out, change the locks on the doors. You know that simple, S-I-M-P-L-E, that simple woman 
Pastor, you're too hard. That's my son. I can't put my son out. I said, well, you'll die an early death and hit, hmm. hit, hit and hurt your property. And that's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. She died prematurely. He inherited the property. And, and, and you know, every time he saw me, he would move to the other side of the street. Those demons would tremble at the Holy Ghost in me. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got a kid li living in your house, that kid's 35, won't work, sleeping in your bed, eating it out of your refrigerator, spending your Social Security check, you need to wake up and smell the coffee. It's time to exercise some tough love. You can take care of some of those demons by taking care of your own household, by standing up on the word of God. If, if, if a person is living in my household and they're able to get a job, they ought to be working. Mm -hmm. Well, they can't find a job. They ought to be out there looking. If they ain't looking, they ought to be in the prayer room praying. You pray long enough, you'll get a job. You trust God long enough, you'll get a job. Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Well, there are so many more things I want to say today, but we'll save a little bit. We'll save a little bit. We just expose the devil in so many areas, and you can expose him too. Look at the behavior of the people in your life. When they're misbehaving, that's demonic activity. No, it's not a social ailment. It's demonic activity. It's mm -hmm. Satan in that person trying to separate that person from God, trying to prevent that person from getting saved and delivered. And also, Satan's trying to disrupt your household. If your husband's acting funny, smelling funny, smelling like uh, 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 Madam Shoo Shoo or, 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 or Sister Sookie, if your husband come home smelling like Sister Sookie, you don't have to wait till he come home smelling like that three or four more times, shut him down. Shut him down. Ladies and gentlemen, stick with this ministry. We'll teach you how to have how to have your husband crawling back. He'll crawl back to the door and ring the bell. Baby, please take me back. But you've got to trust the word of God and you've got to get tough. Some of you need to get tough. You gotta to get tough. You gotta to stop make make up your mind. That's it. I ain't getting kicked around by the devil anymore. Devil, that's it. You got to get a case of the hallelujah, I don't care. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. I don't care. That's it. You've got to draw the line, put on the whole armor of God, and study the word of God. Go back and review 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 to 5. Go back and review Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 18. And, and, and connect with me later on next week, next week the same time. But if you need counseling or you want to comment or uh, questions, you can, if you don't, uh, ask during the time where we have that deliberation time or uh, commenting time after this message, you can email me, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or give me a call, 770-559-9710. I'll be glad to talk with you. Praise God. But from now, from, from this point on, we're going to get ready for a prayer and deliverance ministry and laying hands on the sick and ministering to those in need. But before we do that, we're going to ask our young friend, his name is Nathan. We're going to ask Nathan to lead us in closing prayer. Come on, Nathan. God bless you. Hi, Pastor. Hey, man. How you doing? Doing good. All right, you ready? So I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, we're ready too, Nathan. Dear Lord, thank you for this online church and message today. I would like to pray for Pastor Carter and his family. I would like to pray for all these normal people, my family, Lynette, Wes, Christy, Linda, Megan, Robert, Ryan, Terry, and all the random callers. And I would like to pray for the world and to be able and for the world and us to be able to fight against demons. Thank you for the food and drinks, for the nourishment for our bodies. Forget forgive us for our sins, known and unknown. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nathan. Nathan, we love you, man. We love you. We thank God for you. And we praise God. Uh, God hears your prayers. And we thank God that you're part of this ministry, this church. You're part. We, we, we already make you a member of this church, this online church, Nathan. Praise God. Amen. And we pray to God to use you to help us to win many souls to the Lord. How about that, Nathan? Thank you for the opportunity. God bless you all. Praise God. God bless you too, son. And, and, and God bless your mom and dad and your family. Praise. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Okay, we're going to uh, take time out now. Anyone want to come on? You have some comments or any questions, and then we're going to go into prayer requests. Just unmute your phone and any comments, questions. If you have questions on how to get your loved ones set free from Satan's bondage, we're going to get there eventually. Uh, we're working towards that. Probably next week we'll just start on that. We're going to be teaching you how how you can get your loved one. No matter what kind of activity your loved one is in, and if it's harmful activity, you can get that person set free. God has set them free based on your prayers. We're going to teach you how to do that. Any questions? Any comments? Uh, Pastor Carter. Hello. Hi, this is Jackie Fisher. Hey, Jackie Fisher, the original hey. Jackie Fisher. Yes, this is Jackie Fisher with a question. Mm-hmm. How do you um, pray to God for your loved one's spiritual eyes to be opened? How do you pray for your loved one's spiritual eyes to be open? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jackie, there are several things you can do. Number one, um, reassure God that you love your loved one. Okay. God, God, I love this person. I love this person, and you do too. And number two, treat them like you love them. Okay. Okay. So in your heart, you make sure you, you don't have any animosity. Because, you know, sometimes our loved ones can get on our last nerve, can't they? Yes, sometimes they can. So it takes patience and love and, 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 and even, Lord, they did it again, but I still love him. I still love her. And, and show patience and pray for that person. And then when you start recognizing if it's stubbornness, rebellion Jackie and we're going to be teaching where this probably starting next week you can bind that spirit that personality you're seeing in that person that personality is a spirit for example uh, um, if that person is gambling the family's finances away then you can bind that spirit that demon of gambling and wasting family resources and when you bind that spirit then you can ask God to set your loved one free. It's a whole, the whole process of uh, what Jesus taught us, whatsoever you shall, on, on, um, in Matthew 18, 18 and 19, Jackie? Yes. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You bind that spirit, that personality you see being manifested, or that behavior, Name it as a spirit, if it's gambling, if it's lust, if it's adultery, if it's cheating, if it's lying, or uh, if it's uh, corruption or deception. You bind that spirit based on the personality you're seeing. And then you begin praying for God. God, deliver, deliver. And, and that's before you. That's before you. You're praying, God, deliver. And you're praying in love, Jackie. No matter how much they get on your last nerve, Jackie, you're praying in love for that person. And that's how you release a loved one from Satan's captivity. Pretty soon we're going to be uh, looking at Hosea in uh, chapters 1, 2, 3, Jackie, of Hosea. And how Hosea was in a bad marriage. I mean, he... That marriage was messed up, and she was doing some messed up things. But through love and trust in the Lord and obedience to the Holy Spirit, Hosea got his wife back and got her set free. So 
that's a whole different message I just gave you, Jackie, that uh, we'll probably jump, start getting into um, in next week or, or the next two weeks. Okay. Well, thank you. That, that's that been a lot of great information. I really appreciate it. Okay. And also, Jackie, any time during the week, if you want to call me or call Jackie and uh, or set up an appointment, uh, we can give you. I can give you a one-on-one -on -one appointment where it's just you and me, Jackie. You and me. Uh, we can meet on this same uh, um, link, and and I can answer your questions. You have the privacy, and and uh, what you and I talk about stays here. Okay. Okay. All that right. That would be wonderful. Thank and I can you teach so you. I can teach you how to get. By the way, anyone else? If you got a loved one doing ain't doing right. Uh, God can get them right based on your prayers. Your, it's based on your trust in the Lord. So uh, we don't put people, we don't let you put your business out in the street here on this ministry. But if you want to set up a personal conference, we'll work together and you watch what God will do. Amen. Thanks, Jackie Fisher. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions, comments? Hey, Pastor, this is uh, Ro Brother Robert Peary. Hey, Brother Robert, how are you doing? Oh, man, God is always good. He's he's so awesome. Um, I just want to make a, a, a comment and just uh, to also just to thank you for, for blessing us today with such a wonderful message and, and wonderful passage uh, for us to be guided for, you know, keeping us in, in alignment with God's word. I really, really appreciate that. Praise you know, God. Uh, um, Praise God. Thanks, just, Brother Robert. Thanks, Brother Robert. Yeah, I just wanted to just comment and say, you know, um, for, you know, the message and just to, you know, pinpoint on, on a lot of things that you said, um, I, I think we um, have lost a lot of faith and a lot of people have lost a lot of, um, um, you know, uh, God's alignment with truth because of fear. Um, and you mentioned, you mentioned a lot of things, you know, pointing you know, anxiety and, and things that are, are coming against the, the spiritual attacks that's come against the family, the family structure. Well, one thing that I know and I, and I see um, more and more, even in, in my, my life, I mean, I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm going through a lot of spiritual attacks. Um, one thing I do recognize is that when, when the enemy sees something good, he wants to rip it down. Uh, and, oh, yeah. and I want to tell everybody this, that's one line, anything that God has put together, that he joined together, that's rightfully his, is going to be spiritually attacked. You know, you know, once you under God's true, true covenant, you're going to be attacked. So um, we as we as brothers, we as sisters, we as a family, a church family, need to help one another, need to uplift one another need to join arms in the name of Jesus. Yeah, amen. We, we got to be strong, strong bodies to, to resist temptation, resist amen. sin, resist amen. the evil spirits that are coming attacking us. We Praise have God. to be strong and, like you mentioned, stay in God's love and the truth. And also, not only that, but, but, but know, know each other by our fruits. Know, know each other by the fruits of the Spirit. And and we can see each other and know each other by the fruits of what God has delivered. Amen. I'm going to cut you short, Brother Robert. I'm going right. to cut you short, okay? All so right. we get some more. I appreciate what you're saying. Right. And you yep. and I, we're going to do some talking this week. Amen. In fact, tomorrow I'll be talking with you. Praise Amen. God. Amen. But Praise thank God. you for what you have shared. Sure. Uh, uh, no matter what Satan is doing, ladies and gentlemen, you are the key. You are the key. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You can shut it down. You can flip the script. You can turn that situation upside down, no matter who you are, no matter what your situation is. Anyone else want to share, question, comment? Any prayers? Any prayer requests? Are there any prayer requests? I thank God for young Nathan for praying for us and praying for the church family, for our families, for, for his own family. We need more of this, more of this in our households. Pastor Carter, I, I have a prayer request. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is this Megan? Um, yes. Hey, Megan. Hey. Um, so 
my oldest daughter is 12 and she was um, hurt when she was 13 months old and she's sustained um, brain damage and, and what they call left side spasticity, which is cerebral palsy on her left side. We went to, she, we just moved and so we had to go get physicals for school and all the stuff they wanted. And upon her getting her physical, she was just diagnosed with scoliosis. And um, I just, I really, <clears throat> I'm struggling. Um, I'd like to pray this thing far, far away from her. What is scoliosis, you say? It's uh, her, her, ba her back. Because, because of the spasticity, um, her left leg and her left arm are shorter than her right side. She doesn't have mobility. She can walk but her foot drags and she only has fine motor skills in her thumb and her middle finger. So she is able to tie her shoe, things like this, um, but she's extremely limited. Scoliosis means that your spine is essentially backward and it's a body cast for the rest of her life. Surgeries, we, we, we do three surgeries at least every year for the last 11 years. And this one, is a lot more involved if it goes in this direction and um, there's a possibility I've, I talked I, I, I talked to a holistic doctor and um, they said that there's a good possibility that with stretching and um, the tens units and all these other devices and things that she may not have to be body casted and she may not have to do millions of surgeries Mm -hmm. And I'd like to pray that that could be the case. Okay. Can we pray with you, Megan? Please. Can I pray for you? Please. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, now this is Megan, and Megan from California. Megan is um, a very, very important person to this online church, and uh, she's one of our students, and she loves the Lord. She stands in the gap. Megan stands in the gap for a lot of people. And a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, when you're standing in the gap for others and you're showing a whole lot of love and concern for others, a lot of times uh, you might have your own deep hurts. And Megan has her own deep hurt in her own home. And um, we want to let Megan know that she is not by herself because what affects one member of the body of Christ affects us all. And that's, that's the way we roll, Megan. What affects one of you affects every one of us. And so because it's not happening in your household, John or Joyce or uh, Jane, uh, uh, it's happening with Megan. And Megan is one of us. She's a member of the body of Christ. And the scripture says we are fitly joined together. So in, in giving instructions to Megan, I'm going to give Megan some instructions and as you listen to these instructions, this will help you also. We're talking about spiritual warfare. And then we will pray for Megan. And we're going to pray the prayer of agreement. The prayer of agreement from Mark chapter 11, that if any two of you touch upon anything you agree upon, asking God in the name of Jesus, believing that he will do. If any two of us, touch upon this as we pray for Megan. God will do it. And then and then we wait on the Lord, Megan. We wait on the Lord. His word will not return unto him void or empty. God is not a man that he should lie. So many people miss their blessings. They miss their healings, miss their miracles because they get impatient. We're not going to put a timeline on God. We're not going to command he do it right now in his own time. But we're going to stand on the scripture, Megan. The scripture says that if any two of us agree as touching upon anything we ask God in the name of Jesus, believing that God will do. Now, Megan, you've been with us long enough. You've seen what... God did uh, with um, in, in, in Texas with uh, Israel when um, Zisla came online and said uh, Z uh, Israel needs a transplant, but a liver transplant. And the doctor says uh, he, his 
his health is not good and his weight's not good and he cannot qualify for a transplant and um, and and they put him on dialysis for a kidney failure and and it looked kind of hopeless on that end but we began to pray and I, God gave me instructions for Zisla what to do and and within a week listen ladies and gentlemen within a week of God giving instructions to Zisla in Texas about what to do about her co-worker named Israel and how we prayed within a week ladies and gentlemen the doctors saw a miracle happen automatically this man was qualified for a transplant his body lined up in order to receive a transplant and within a week ladies and gentlemen he had a transplant so Megan we're saying this to you because there's nothing impossible for God ladies and gentlemen just be patient as I give these instructions because Megan is our sister and and her child is our little sister and what happens in one household affects all of us and God has given us enough love and enough faith in him and trust in him and given us spiritual authority we can touch him and the Holy Ghost will do the work we don't do the work Megan uh, it's the Holy Ghost who does the work as we told Zisla and Israel has a transplant now and living well and, and healthy and 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 the Holy Ghost did that work because the Holy Ghost honors the Word of God and so Megan here's what I want you to do Megan get some olive oil and I want you to go to your child at the appropriate time and call your child's name and tell her what you're going to do and you tell your child I'm going to anoint you in the name of Jesus to be healed you got that Megan I do you take some you take some olive oil and I'm going to give you a scripture James chapter 5 verse 14 13 14 and 15 and 16 James chapter 5 verses 13 through 16 you do what this scripture tells you to do and watch what God will do then ladies and gentlemen hang on we've got a few more minutes we're gonna pray for Megan and her child the scripture says James 5 13 through 16 is any among you afflicted let him pray or let her pray is any merry let him sing psalms and ladies and gentlemen as you're listening to this you can do this in your own household with your own family member or even with yourself is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord Megan you are now an elder in the church I just ordained you in the name of Jesus you're an elder and any head of the household any any mother any father you are an elder in the church when it comes to ministering to your family Thank is any you. sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of Jesus Megan you take a, a couple drops of oil and just rub it rub them on your daughter's forehead and say these words I anoint you in the name of Jesus to be healed yes sir I'm gonna do that as soon that, as done that's what you do and and Megan as crazy as it may sound and no matter what your family members think it's best to do it in private just you and your daughter if your daughter questions and you read these scriptures to her and tell your daughter this is how you're going to get healed and you tell your daughter and we're gonna wait on the Lord until his time comes for you to be healed you impress that upon her waiting on the Lord is very important Megan don't get weary in well-doing if you see pe people all around you getting healed you still wait on the Lord because that prayer that we're gonna plant today in the name of Jesus we're gonna plant this prayer in in the bosom of God in the name of Jesus God will honor the prayer you know why because he said his word will not return unto him void I hope you all got this teaching and now uh, the scripture says and the prayer of faith listen shall save the sick 
and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Means you don't have to scream out your prayer, make a whole lot of noise, make a big show like they do in some churches. No, you just pray. Lay your hands on her, anoint her with oil, and pray the prayer of faith. What's the prayer of faith? Then you go back to Mark chapter 11. That if any two of you agree, it's touching upon anything you ask God in the name of Jesus, believing that he will do. So, Megan, you have the instructions. Church, it's up to us now to come into agreement. I'm going to look in the chat window. I want to see somebody who's going to agree with us that God's going to do this in Megan's household. Terry's in, Jeep's in agreement. Dustina's in agreement. Christy Carpenter and her household are in agreement. Nathan's in agreement. Robert Peary's in total agreement. Ryan Trogler's in agreement. Linda Barrett's in agreement. Praise God. And I'm in agreement. And Wes is in agreement. And all these other people. Sister Jackie's in agreement. Praise God. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you said if any two of us touch upon anything we ask you in the name of Jesus, believing that you will do. And, Father, we're asking for healing for Megan's daughter, that as Megan goes forth and anoints her daughter with oil, according to James chapter 5, that you're going to heal her body based on what you said in your word. And we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the healing. We bind that spirit of infirmity that has gripped this daughter in the name of Jesus. And we command that it leave her. We command that it leave her. We take authority now in the name of Jesus and we speak to, to uh, that, that demonic spirit, that spirit of infirmity in, Meg, in Megan's daughter. Leave her now in the name of Jesus and don't come back. And Father God, we just lay hands on Megan and lay hands on Megan's daughter uh, corporately as a church. We just stretch out our hands to you and we lay hands on the sick that they will recover as you said in your word. And thank you for the anointing, the anointing of the olive oil which represents the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. We command that this yoke of infirmity be destroyed. We command that this scoliosis be her. We bind the spirit uh, causing scoliosis in the name of Jesus. We command that her body line up with uh, the purpose that God has for it in the name of Jesus. We command that the body correct itself in the name of Jesus. We command uh, that her legs, her back, her hips, and, and all her uh, body parts line up with the word of God. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you, and we worship you, and we bless you, and we praise you, and we, we uh, uh, stand on the power of agreement on your word, Lord God. You're not a man that you should lie. Your word will not return unto you void. And so we thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Well, bl brothers and sisters, it's about that time. Um, I will uh, have this um, video on uh, YouTube uh, later this afternoon, and, and it's available for you if you want to review this message. And I encourage you to review the message and share it with someone else and tell someone else about the online church. We're not trying to build up numbers. We're trying to build Christ in people and, and that, that people have an alternative. A lot of people don't go to the brick and mortar church anymore. Many are disillusioned. Many have lost faith. But ladies and gentlemen, God's anointing is on this ministry. Not just this ministry. There are many ministries. God's anointing is there. So be where the anointing is and trust God. And uh, we hope to hear from you during the week. And looking forward to you again on next Sunday. Until then, God bless you. God pray. Praise God. We thank God for you. Nathan has prayed for us. We know we're under the anointing of a powerful prayer coming from Brother Nathan. And we love you, Lord Jesus. We bless your people. And we say, everybody, have a good day. See ya.